Well, good morning, everybody. It's Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome to my bee yard here in Southeast Louisiana. Remember, guys, I don't do how-to videos. I'm just logging days here and there of uh, keeping bees in my bee yard down here. And folks, as we go on through the video, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you can be notified every time I upload a video. It's been few and far between these days, but here we are. All right, so this morning, uh, and forgive the noise of the unit running, it's the heater running. It is kind of cool out this morning, um, but it's only like the mid 50s, so it's just got a little chill in the air. It's very damp, but it's not cold. And we've had a warm week for the first time since November, so I don't know if that's good or bad, but the bees are flying in the afternoons. So we got something we're gonna do today. Now that little something involves a special guest on my video today, but actually, he's not the guest, I'm the guest. Well. We're kind of doing this together. It's a joint venture. Well, it's a venture with three people. But anyway, today uh, we're going over to the Abbey. To um, we're going to see Mr. Ed and we're going to see Wreck and Ralph. And I don't. I'm guessing Charlie's going to be there, but he. I don't know that he mentioned Charlie. But anyway, what we're doing is a little field day um, out there. And Mr. Ed he rotates his brood boxes this time of year. We all usually do. Uh, now I'm not. I'm. I'm not planning on rotating my boxes this year. Uh, my my thought process is just kind of let them do their thing and slowly progress because um, I'm going to do other things that are going to speed them up and have them ready to uh, be ready for the um, splits and such. So uh, I'm, I'm going to go a little different route this year. For the first time in about four years, I've been rotating my boxes for about four seasons now, maybe three. Um, and like I said before, I didn't ever rotate them. That's the plan. I don't know how it's going to transpire once we get out there because it is going to be a teaching day. Um, and a hands-on day. It's going to be some OJT and on-the-job training type of stuff. Uh, so I'll do some. Other people do some. We'll be teaching learners. I don't know how the video is going to necessarily uh, transpire. We'll, we'll see how we progress with that. But I'm bringing my camera anyway. All right, guys. Well, we're on our way to the Abbey. Um, I say I'm usually I'm 35, 40 minutes away from there normally. You know, give or take if everything goes right. Uh, so not far at all I'm gonna go over there should be a bunch of people and the weather's not it's not the best for being out and opening hives but again we're not inspecting we're not doing any of that hopefully I'll be able to get a good video of what we're going to do but we're gonna reverse brood chambers Whew, lost my voice there. we're gonna reverse brood chambers so it's not a lot of inspecting but they could get ornery but anyway three things we're gonna accomplish with this we're gonna have a lot of people because he invited everybody on the B Club uh, mailing list as well as the Northern Bee Club that that I another one that we go to Everybody's been invited. So I think we'll have quite a few guests And it's gonna be a field day. It's gonna accomplish three things. We've got mr. Ed who has oh Anywhere from 150 to 200 hives. He, he couldn't tell you the exact number But it's just he and good time Charlie is by his side pretty much on every event that he can be um, When he can be so it's basically those two guys plus Rick and Ralph give him a hand when he's not working that's a lot of hives and a lot of stuff to do for three people. So I think this is a great idea because it, it accomplishes three things. It accomplishes getting the work done a lot easier with 20 or 30 people rather than, uh, you know, just uh, three. Um, and granted, we're not going to do all of his hives. He's already done about 30 or 40, I think. But we're going to split up into groups, three groups, and do this. So that's going to accomplish a lot of manual labor. Another thing it's going to accomplish is going to get some new beekeepers involved with working with bees, opening them up, seeing what they're like and weather like this in the winter time during a warm spell that we've got. <laughs> uh, but it's also going to get them a little hands-on opening up because you know when we were all new we didn't know what to expect when we opened the hive. So that's going to be another thing that we accomplish. And we're going to have beekeepers from uh, all levels. We're going to have very beginners that don't even have bees all the way up to folks that have had bees for several years out here today. But the third thing it's going to accomplish is for those that have bees and have had bees for a while, whatever, it's going to scratch that itch. Because uh, we do have a warm week this week. It's the first warm week we've had since Thanksgiving. So we've got a warm week and it's going to scratch that itch. We're going to get to open up and play with bees. And, uh, and granted, we're not going to inspect or anything, but we're going to get to see them, smell them, and, and hear them. And, and most likely, we're going to get to feel them. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. So we're on our way to the Abbey. 
and uh, we're gonna do that for a few hours today help uh, mr. Ed get a get a job done and uh, hopefully teach some some new beekeepers um, just another way to manage colonies at this time of year all right guys let's get on down to the Abbey we gotta get going uh, I'm gonna get there and a little bit early so I can pull my stuff out and say hey to Jeff and uh, drink some coffee. See you in a bit. Well, we made it to the Abbey. I'm gonna go over here and uh, see what old Mr. A is doing. He's, he's Usually when you come out here, he's got work slated for you and that's what he's got. So we're gonna go do it. I got with me none other than Joey Rawls. Y'all can always see his channel at Joseph Rawls on YouTube. There's old Joey, he's got his camera. Say hey Joey. Hey, how y'all doing? And look, he's talking. I think Jeff is talking to a camera. We love to have cameras all over the place around here. This might be a copy. Uh, this might be a copyright violation. I don't know. Look at him. He looks like he's. I need to, I need to call the sheriff's department. We need some security. <laughs> <around here. laughs> we need some security. You look like Grizzly Adams. <laughs> well, I'm, I am. I am on the rough side, man. You know, living living out here in the alley, man. It's you know, it's it's mm -hmm. rough, man. Living off in the woods, man. <laughs> He finally had to move out into the country. Yeah, so I'm, I'm feeling at home though, and, and I'm just trying to fit in. That's all. That's it. All right. Well, <laughs> Look looking... at you, man. You all like skinhead and clean. Well, a little. You got not much up there. I, you want some of mine? No. <laughs> Joey, I'll give you some of mine. Too. Joey, <laughs> I've kind of got used to it. Uh, all right, so years, we're gonna get busy here. and get Jeff to show us what he wants us to do and how we're gonna do this today. So, so they, had, they had a a, a, a lady. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I think Minnesota. Um, I that. And, all. and then another one that says, thank you, Jesus. And it's a, it's a queen in a queen cage. In a queen cage. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and uh, she's got a little crown on her. And I, I, can't, I can't remember what it says in the back. Because it, it is um, important that we do what we're doing today on your, your hives at this time of year. Um, and, and I hope to in a couple more weeks do another field day on, on doing splits. Um, this is the first part of splits, the rotations. Very, very simple. The, 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 the process is simple, and the reasoning behind it is simple. And what, what, go, what we're doing is we're going to go to our, our hives, and all of, my, all of our boxes have, all of our hives have two boxes on them. Because of the, the natural inclination for bees to always want to move up in a hive, we want to take where the bees are now in the second box, which has also got all the stores in it, and we want to put it on the bottom. And the box that's on the bottom, which is generally going to be lighter or empty, it could be, we put that on the top. So <coughs> the bees will then start using the resources in the bottom but at the same time they're using those resources, here we are, the end of January, and our, our maple and our willow, they're already blooming. So if you look at your bees, you're going to see them coming in. I, yesterday, uh, I saw bees with green, yellow, and white pollen coming in. So it's out there right now, and they're, they're, if they have the days to fly, the, the warm weather to fly, they're going to go out there and start gathering. There you go, the youngsters getting involved. That's good stuff. As long as you've been coming. Look, hey Jeff, There's the... I wasn't going to come, but I heard you pay paying $10 an hour, and now I can see it's true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all know who that is, world famous 628. I appreciate Jeff that. Easter. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got a pretty good group here. A yeah, pretty good group. We're going to split into three groups. Mississippi, so he, he had to leave like 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> I just woke up. I was at a rest area. <laughs> All right. All right, there's our group. We're going to head out and do some rotations. And I don't know how it's going to turn out because we've got people all around, but we'll figure it out. And we'll do some fancy editing. We've got a couple of live ones. All right, so what we like to explain, he said explain how we do it, why we do it, he explained a lot of it, but what we should find in here, if I can get out of these briars, lift the hive, somewhat heavy. So all the honey and the bees should be up top by now. That bee's bringing in pollen. Uh, and one thing I know I do when I do my rotations, what I don't want to find is, if the cluster is here, I, 
I, I usually don't rotate it because that means they still have a ways to go up. But normally this time of year, the bees are going to already be in the top. That's, that's normal um, because they've depleted their store. So what we want to do is go in here and flip the boxes. Now, this is a good opportunity to go through this box and call a comb that's really dark if you've had your bees for a while. But uh, we're not doing that today. So, so we'll see what else. I don't know how mean they're going to be with the overcast in the winter. Sometimes in the winter time, you'll think your bees are really, really mean, and they're not. It's, it's not that they're mean, they just haven't been messed with in a long time. And you start breaking them open and doing things to them, they tend to get a little ornery. Another thing, if you're talking about starvation on them, is when your bees are all the way at the top, we want to watch when we're doing a rotation, see how light they are. If they've stored up, uh, eaten up all that honey, the problem you'll have is, especially this time of year, she knows the days are shorter, I mean longer, so she's going to begin to start laying. When she starts laying, she requires pollen, or the workers require uh, pollen and honey. Well, a large hive will go through a lot of honey and pollen and bee bread when they first, when she first begins to get going. So when we hit March around here, we have stuff blooming, but say we get a week of rain, a few days of rain, and they can't go out and, and forage, a strong, strong hive will starve. And you'll think, well, it's March, it's spring, they shouldn't be starving. Well, we don't have a ton coming in yet. We just have a little bit of privet, maybe some scattered privet starting to bloom, some wild mustard. Uh, right now, red maples are blooming, so. So if, if it's gonna rain every three days, uh, that's the time to feed them? Well, in the spring, yeah. In the spring, you can yeah. go ahead and start feeding them. Because that's when, down here, they say that a lot of the beekeepers in the south lose their bees. You don't, you don't a lot of times, lose them to starvation uh, in the wintertime. You lose them at the, at the end of winter when they really need to be building up. Because you, I, there was a beekeeper uh, last year. He's actually a pretty famous guy. He was doing a YouTube or a, a Facebook Live. And he had his strongest hive that was a, a week ago was alive. And now it's dead. And what had happened was there was honey in it. But they're just, they're, they just went through it so fast because she, she turned on the lane once it gets warm. So can you feed them at that point? Sure, because it's warm enough. What you don't want to do is feed them in the middle of the winter because you're introducing more moisture into the hive. Plus it's ice cold in the mornings and they're already dealing with moisture from the condensation. You're better off just emergency feeding at that time with dry sugar, but that's a whole other subject. All right, so we'll go ahead and I'm going to move this up so y'all can get up close. And we're going to see what they look like. So y'all can come on, move on yeah, in, and we'll take a look at what we got. Oh, look at the beetles. Beetles. Only a beetles. So if you come in here and look, what we have is we have a bunch of honey. See all the honey all the way across. If you can feel the hive, it's good and heavy. Very heavy. Yes. One thing, see, if they're doing fine, you don't. You just give them a little bit of smoke right now. I wouldn't smoke them a lot because what you don't want is to smoke them down. What we're going to do with this tool, I'll show that in there. This hive is good stuck together. This is what you're going to run into. So that tool so we this gave tool, you. Okay. Come around and look. We'll put it right in here like so. And what it's doing is it's, it's mainly if you're by yourself. You can use two of them as well. Then I get the next one up, and now I've got it up a good ways. And all he's saying is you're just making sure that you don't have burr comb sticking the, see right there, I feel burr comb. And you, what happens sometimes the burr comb is so strong in these hives it pulls these things right up with it. And those are all the bees are coming up. I'll put a little bit of smoke in here. Again, I don't want to run them in the bottom. So, we can take our tool out. And who wants to lift it up and see how heavy it is? Who ain't felt one? Anybody? It's heavy. What we'll do, let's just take this right here. And now this box, no handle, it's extremely light. There's nothing in this box. Let's take a quick peek at what's in here. Since we've got time, here's the burr comb we want to get up. 
I did a video just recently on this. Keep all of this stuff throughout your inspection days and make little balls. I take, I had an entire grocery bag full of Burkholm and made a nice, nice patty of wax out of it. So what do we have in here? But it should be all empty. Without, except the beetles. Yeah, you're gonna have those. That's you can tell the hive's a little small because they're allowing so many roaches in there. Yeah. Usually, a roach will be pushed up and the ants will be pushed up. The beetles, they just live with them. Let's see what we got. See, there's still a little bit of honey in the bottom. That's not gonna be a problem. But you notice everything's empty. There's nothing, nothing worth saving in there. Uh, this will all be, and this is good looking comb. I mean, this is good comb she can move up in and begin. This is not that old. Would you clean off that bottom thing? I, I don't. Okay. Normally I wouldn't even get in here. I'm just doing it to show y'all. Okay. If I feel that box is that light, I know that there's nothing worth really keeping on the bottom. Now. Yeah, he's basically yeah. just showing you what to expect. What do you rotate the Normally look Yeah, we're gonna you rotate. Go through, no, if you go through them, do you rotate the, the frame? No, not at no. all. See, yeah, again, right. the bees are just traversing over this. They've got nectar in there. See that nectar? That's telling you there's something out oh, there. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of times what they're getting nectar from this time of year is uh oh. is uh they're getting nectar from the um wild mustard. Uh, we'll put one more. Normally, normally we'd already had this one rotated. Right, this would be done. See more nectar? So what they're doing is they're beginning to backfill this nest a little bit. Because the top is pretty heavy. Would you also be looking for the queen? Yeah, most definitely. She normally wouldn't be down here. Just because they're traversing this and they're just guarding this little bit of nectar. But like Joey said, we would already have this done. Now here's the, here's the what Jeff teaches at the bee meetings is if this box were still full and very heavy, and and the top one was just all honey and, the, and there were a lot of bees down here right now, and the, you know with a little bit of broodmate, we wouldn't rotate it. And that was a question uh, that was asked in there. Is there's no need to rotate them because they haven't even moved up yet. But 90% of the time they've moved up. See this? See this little ball of queen, uh, bees mm -hmm. right here? That's a good example. Right here. Mm -hmm. If you needed to find your queen, you could that's where find she would be. Three up there good point. Good point. And they're not mean. They're they're actually acting really nice. Yeah. yeah. A lot of beetles. So what I do I with my box? Here and do this for 30 minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can All tell right. by the front a lot of times. I'm gonna dump this. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. So to rotate the box, so go ahead and put that one down. This is the one we took off the top. Go ahead and put it down in there. Who wants to do? Somebody. <laughs> There you there's go. On that one. Yeah, there's handles on that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna get this up. Yep. Yep. It's heavy now, yeah. you. Okay. I'll be looking at 60 pounds. All right. What? How about the baby? There you go. You're all right. You don't have to learn to get out of the way. Sorry. No, you're good. Don't ever do up. Do you ever do that? Like I try to like. I try to, but I don't always do it. All right. You got uh, a load in your hands. It's yeah, hard to do. do, what you do. Go ahead and grab the top one there. It's got no handles. So you got to grab it underneath. That's the carpenter, no handles. Watch now. She, she she's gonna ease it on. Now slide it back over, over top of the bees you squished. <laughs> no, you good. You you. But there you go. So where's the lid at? Here. Is that the inner cover? No, that's there. Here it is. Yeah. Get that on there. And that is it, honestly, that's all you gotta do. It can take you five minutes a hive, at best. So, dead out, there's roaches, there's roach feces, there's wax moth in this one. It's got nothing in it, it's been robbed out. See, here's a wax moth larvae, how they eat into the wood. Uh, and what he was saying is they'll clean the frames, 
they will literally clean the frames off. All right, we're over here at another group. And they're doing their rotation. Yep. So how much did that weigh, man? Uh, 60, 50. It's a lot, there's a lot of honey in those things. Who's training who? <laughs> I'm trying to knock some of that $50 off. I'm hoping uh, that man, he'll knock it down at least 20 or 30. I'm just, I'm just putting in time. Well, Mike, you want to start that? Yeah, that's why I was wanting to know if you wanted to start. All right, so here we go. Let's go down here. We'll start at the other end. There you go. And you can just hang that on the fence behind you if you want once you're done. Oh, yeah, they're up to the top. That should be enough. Okay. Here, yeah, yeah. So say just we'll move it. And let's... All right, we can set that to the side. Let's look inside. What do we got? Yeah. Yep, they're all at the they're top. top with a bunch of honey. So that's why we don't smoke them down and a bunch of honey. So go ahead and break the box loose. You can use your tool in there to kind of insert it so it. You insert it in one side, then you work the other side. There you go. Now work the other side if it's not. And all right, now stick your hive tool in there. Make sure the they're not stuck together. Go all the way across. There you go. All right, throw your tool. Just throw it on the ground if you're done with it. All right. Hold on. Let her grab that so she'll flip the box. We're gonna pick it up. Yeah. So get to the side of it if you can, because it's gonna be heavy. There you go. And then rock it forward, and it should break loose. Tell me if you need help once you get it up. Okay. Sit it on its side. On I'll this hand. Yep. Watch your fingers. All right. So you're good. Now they're coming out. Now lift this box and see how heavy it is. Kind of just grab the bottom of it and see what it's Okay. Good. So break that one loose. There you go. Now. Do the same thing. Just out of your way somewhere. Because you're going to have to walk with the other one. We're going to make you do it all. All these burrs. <laughs> Come on. All right. All right, now get your head. We haven't been over there yet. All right. Now, you want to put your heavy one down? Same way. We don't have a lot of burr comb to clean, so. There you go. Good job. They're heavy when they're. This is the ideal box reversal if you're going to do them. All right. All right. All right. And let's get the other one on. Watch that briar right there. They're getting the sun to help me, so. He does all the heavy work. I still have to do mine. There you go. Yeah, I feel older than you. Now, this one's got a notch. You want to notch up. But he had to notch down, didn't he? Yeah. No, notch up. So notch up and in the front. And what that's going to provide is ventilation. Let me get that bee out of there. There you go. And put your lid on. And just like that, you're done. All right. See, is that one stuck together? See, now that's that's a prime example of why you're putting that tool in there. Is to give you a chance to clean that out in between so that you're not fighting it. Now, I got a second one we can even put on the other side if you want to get it higher. And it makes it easier. Yeah, yeah. So we'll put a second one in and get it even higher. And this, what this does, it just makes it easy on you. I was wondering about the levels. So However high you want to get it. This one's really this, heavy. But it, it's it's light. It's it's light. That, it's, that one's heavier. Yeah, it's sure. light. So you, you can you can reverse that one. Yeah, put that one on top. Let's clean it off real quick. So since you got the bees where you want them, just throw a little smoke to them and go ahead and clean them, and you'll be good to go. All right, go ahead and pop that one loose. Flip it to the side and. Oh, so that's plastic on top. Yeah, he's got a couple of those Teflon ones I've seen around here. So it's not—it's pretty light, huh? Lighter. lighter. Yeah. While you got them open, the good thing to do with these is just kind of clean them out. I mean, you can. Just that simple. In the summer. You can because a lot of people like to bring it, uh, flip it around if they're running supers on there, so the bees go straight to the top with the honey. Because um, at that time it's so hot down here, it doesn't matter about it, I and mean, it's going to ventilate anyway. Tiny cluster of bees, and a little box of, of, of 
of uh, honey up here. I'm not doing anything with this. These guys are okay. Even though this box weighs more, um, I want the bees down there. They can come up, they'll move up. As you move along, you, you make that decision. If you got time, you don't have to rush like I'm doing. You don't have to do that. This is the way Jeff does everything there, double speed. Oh yeah. Yeah, you think he's editing his video, he's not. <laughs> yeah, you, you think he's fast forwarding? Yeah, he's not. <laughs> real time, real time. All righty. Well, that's all she wrote. We all done. I think everybody enjoyed it. Everybody learned a little something. Decided how they want to do their hives. And again, this is, uh, I suppose it was a bit of teaching because I was talking to everybody. But Jeff asked me to talk about the way we learned from Mr. Julian Lane on how to rotate boxes and what our system was for uh, doing splits. And this is for pre preparation for doing splits. So. That's why he chose myself and, and Ralph and all we and Joey because we've been with the we've been with the same club for quite a few years now. So we got out there, we showed them uh, one of the ways to do it and the reasons we did. So I guess it was kind of a how-to video, mainly if you were paying attention, but uh, to what I was saying. Um, but other than that, it was just me showing you what I'm what I'm doing here and there. And every now and then I do go speak at the club or I speak at the Northern Club like I did Thursday. Um, just on the simple basics because that's all I am is a basic average guy trying to keep bees alive so we're all wrapped up here got to get uh, everybody together it was good to see a lot of these folks hadn't seen them in a while because um, we haven't been meeting the Ag Center's not open yet so we don't get to go out there but... It's always a pleasure coming out here to the Abbey. We just got a little lesson on some of the old buildings and some of the uh, things they used to do in the 50s around here. So it's always neat to come out here. It's always good to see Jeff. And uh, Again, it was twofold. We could help him out and get some stuff done. So anyway, that's going to be the end of it. I think we're going to go out and eat. Um, and uh, I don't know where we're going to go. Mexican maybe? We'll see. This is, this is Charlie and Jeff's hangout right here. And, and I think the Dirt Roots has been here with you too. Yeah, this is where um, we shot that video. Ah. We caught the, a big old swarm. And, and we met right here. Right there here. you go. This is it. <laughs> you never know where bees will show up <laughs> at a Mexican restaurant. That's right. Anyway, I appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate you guys following along. Glad I could finally get a video out. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. It doesn't cost you a dime. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. Share this video with your friends, your family, anybody just enjoys watching bees. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. Take care.